All right, welcome to Talking Investing. I am Tom, and as always, this is not financial advice. Today, I want to talk about the Ethereum merge. So we're going to talk about Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, take a look at the short-term effects, and then what might happen over time. So as everybody probably knows by now, overnight last night, the merge occurred. Basically, the merge itself logistically was very seamless, so no big news there at all. But I want to dig into the price action. Let's talk about what the merge actually was, and then I want to look at some charts and see what's happening to Ethereum. Ethereum today, see what's happening to Ethereum Classic, and then I want to talk about a potential Ethereum fork. So there's an awful lot going on, so stick around to the end of the video. If you're new to the channel, please remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Also, if everybody could smash the like button, I would appreciate it. I want to thank everybody for your continued support on the channel. Okay, so let's talk about Ethereum. All right, so I'm going to read an article that was written at 5.22 in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. So this was just after the merge. Ethereum merge has completed its long-awaited update, Buterin says. Okay, the Ethereum blockchain completed its long-awaited merge update early Thursday morning, the crypto project's co-finder, Vitalik Buterin, has said. So he's really the face of Ethereum in my mind. He's one of the co-founders, and he's definitely the most vocal. The upgrade promises to cut energy consumption from the network. That should make it a more attractive asset for institutional investors according to analysts okay so that's one important thing I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this but I am gonna do some other videos and we've talked about this in the past the point of the merge was to reduce energy costs and it's gonna reduce them drastically so this is the actual cost of minting new ethereum so that is gonna take somewhere between 99 and 99.9 percent .9 less energy than it was taking under the proof of work scenario however I'm just gonna quickly say there's an awful lot of articles most articles are saying that it is also going to increase the speed at which Ethereum works and decrease the Ethereum fees. And those things are not accurate. That is nothing to do with the merge. There are plans to make other changes to Ethereum that should accomplish those goals. However, that was not a part of the merge. So as you read this, I've probably read 100 articles that talk about that, but it's really, if you dig into that, that has nothing to do with the merge. And Vitalik Buterin is the first one to say, this is all about energy. So let's keep reading. Ethereum was up 2.2 after the announcement, trading to 1,620. So we're going to check the chart because this was immediately after the merge. It is now down quite a bit from there, but I would not say it is crashing. We're going to take a look at those charts though, because it is falling. It's way off of this high from overnight last night. So literally even this article says the merge, which was in the works for almost seven years, moves Ethereum from a proof of work to a proof of stake consensus mechanism, meaning that the gas fees or cost transactions will fall for the token. So that's actually not correct. It should also make processing transactions faster. That's also not correct. The justification for saying that is that there's other changes. The merge was the first of a series of changes. So some of the future changes are going to do what this is talking about, but the merge itself, everybody's been quite clear. This is actually just to reduce the energy cost. So, and it is, it is absolutely going to be a massive reduction in the cost of energy. Ethereum is no longer mined by Ethereum miners. So everybody who was mining Ethereum yesterday, they are not mining that today. There is no more Ethereum mining. Okay. So that leads me to my next thing. Before we get to the charts, I want to go through Ethereum classic and Ravencoins hash rate nearly doubles after the merge. So this is an article this morning. So here you can see you've got hundreds of millions, if not a billion dollars worth of GPUs out there with the sole purpose of mining Ethereum. Well, as of last night, that ceases to exist. So all of those machines have to find a new home and a new purpose. The immediate reaction is that Ethereum Classic and Ravencoin, both of which are proof of stake, their hash rate has nearly doubled after the merge. So that's just in a few hours. So we will see what happens. I expect that to continue, but that by no means takes care of all of the computing power that just went offline. I would say still 80 or 90% of that computing power is probably searching for a home right now, some of which we may never go back into operation. Okay, so the third thing is a potential fork from Ethereum, and that's the ETHW. So major Ethereum mining pools, this is an article that came out this morning, major Ethereum mining pools will back ETHW mining. F2 pool, Poolin, and BTC.com 
and Nanopool will support Ethereum proof of work after the merge? That is a gigantic question mark. It remains to be seen if there's any success in that at all. So we're going to have to stay tuned. That's a big, big variable in my opinion. Okay, so you will see there's one big exception. Ethereum's biggest mining pool to stop offering services for the network. So although most of the main pools are going to continue to offer services for the forked proof of work Ethereum, Ethermine, the world's largest Ethereum mining pool, and it's the biggest by far, will stop offering proof of work services after the Ethereum network switches to proof of stake, which it did last night, and won't be following up with services for the planned proof of work forks. All of these things are not instantaneous. It, it, it could take days, weeks, months to see between Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, and whatever forked Ethereum comes out, you know, all of these may have different reactions. The initial reaction right now is a pullback. So let's get to the charts. I'm gonna start with Ethereum and let's see what has happened to Ethereum since it switched to proof of work overnight last night. Okay, so this is Ethereum on the two hour time frame. Each one of these candles represents two hours. So this is basically the last five or six days. So you see, if I go back to September 6th, Ethereum was trading in the $1,500 range. It had a nice run up and you'll see on this chart, it says it got to a high of $1,761 on September 13th. Last night, overnight, it got to a high of $1,655. So you can see these candles right here is where the merge happened. So after that, it did take a big drop, but then we had two two hour candles in a row. So that's about a four hour period where we were very, very sideways and it seemed to be settling in just under $1,600. However, in the last two hours, we've had a dramatic drop off. We're now at $1,499. We dropped under $1,500. It's been there for about a half an hour. So had I done this video two or three hours ago, we would not have known about this drop. So again, th that means we're very, very early into this. We really don't know what the effects are. So the most recent candle seems to be pushing us downward into potentially a new territory. However, you'll see we're at just under $1,500 right now. And that really is where we were a week ago back on September 6th and September 7th. So it was a roller coaster ride up. At the moment, we've come back down to where we started. We'll see. Ethereum did have, if I switch over to the one day chart, you'll see from its lows in the middle of July, Ethereum did have a very big run. So this got down near a thousand. It got down to a low of $1,005. That was on July 13th. So the run up was almost 100% from July to August. We've pulled back since then, but even even to the price that we're at right now, we're still up 43% off of the July lows. And again, this one day chart shows real support here at around $1,500. You'll see we were in the 1450 area back at the end of July. We were there again at the end of August. We candle wick down here on September 7th and now we're here again. So we'll see. We potentially are settling into what seems to be a possible line of support. So obviously we're gonna have to watch this for the next days and weeks. So if something drops drastic happens, I will do an update to this video to, to let everybody know what's going on. But for the moment, I think this is a pretty natural pullback. I don't think this is too far out of expectations. You know, somewhere around $1,500 is not a drastic move up or down in Ethereum. So, and the merge itself happened very seamlessly. No glitches, no errors, no speed bumps. So that part's obviously good news for investors, but it remains to be seen where we go from here. I wanna take a quick look at what happened to Ethereum Classic since then. So we can see since the merge last night, Ethereum has dropped a couple of hundred dollars off of its highs. So from its high to its low on this one day candle, Ethereum was down as much as 11%. It's now a little bit under 10%. If I switch over to Ethereum Classic, you'll see Ethereum Classics had a little bit different journey. This is the one day chart for Ethereum Classic. So you'll see Ethereum had a gigantic run up. Again, it hit its lows in the middle of July. However, its run up was 229%. And again, that was to the middle of August. Ethereum Classic is still up 168%. So if this was the trade that you made several months ago going into the merge, so far this trade has worked very well. You're still way up on this. And again, we just saw the amount of hash rate just doubled today. So I do think that's a strong signal signal that Ethereum Classic, even if it's not the big winner, it looks to me like this had a nice move to the upside. It may sustain and it may go up from here. So for me at this point, and again, this is not financial advice. These are all incredibly volatile. So I really don't know which way all of these are going, but if I had to guess, I think the safest bet out of all of these is Ethereum Classic, in my opinion. Lastly, you have ETHPOW. This chain technically has not started.
started yet. It's going to start tonight. They're going to have a countdown clock for this as well. However, you can see this is down dramatically. It's actually up over the last half an hour. It was down into the $17 range. So it's down 36% day over day. But if I look at the one day chart, you'll see this is where the volatility was. And again, this is a very small market cap thing. You know, they haven't really even established an official market cap for it yet. There's only been $45 million of this that has traded. But you can see the roller coaster ride. This is a one day chart. So last night, overnight, this got all the way up over $60. Just within the last hour, it was at $18.79. So you can see this has gone down dramatically. So we're going to have to watch again the market cap of this is tiny in comparison even to ethereum classic never mind ethereum so i think you you can expect much 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 more volatility out of such a very small thing especially since we don't really even know if there's going to be adoption of this and most of this picture is still almost completely unknown i'm just going to close out on the ethereum two hour time frame and you'll see we still have a big red candle but we are off of our lows so we seem to be settling in at around 1494 the moment and i don't want to say settling in because you can see this has the potential to change rapidly for the next several days so at the moment we're just under $1,500 and there is a potential line of support there. We've hit that spot several times over the last month. So it's official. Ethereum is now no longer proof of work. There is no more Ethereum mining. Ethereum is proof of stake. This will reduce the energy that it takes to mint Ethereum by, they're expecting 99%. So that's a dramatic move. As for the rest of it, I think we're going to have to wait and see what comes. So that's my update on Ethereum. Drop down in the comments below if you guys have any thoughts or if you know any more details about what may be coming with a potential Ethereum fork. So thanks again for watching and we will see you in the next video.